Welcome to the video. My name is Alex and on this channel I cover all things Azure. And today, today the factory saga continues. And in this video, we are going to check out the pipeline return values. To get most out of this video, you should be already familiar with data factories variables and dynamic content. If you are not familiar with those topics, please check out the links in the description where I have linked the two videos that I have made on those topics. Now let's go into today's topic, pipeline return values. What are those? If you are familiar with any programming languages like Python, you know that you can build functions there and your functions can have return values. This is the similar concept to that. In this case, we can think about one pipeline as one function. So, when we are nesting pipelines on top of each other in Data Factory, we can send information from the lower level pipeline to the upper level master pipeline using return values. It is better if I don't try to explain this concept to you only verbally. So, let's fire up the Data Factory and I will show you how this concept works in practice. Now we are in the data factory. Let's start by first creating a new folder for our tutorial 12. And then let's create our first pipeline to this folder. Let's call this pipeline PL tutorial 12 demo 1 logic. And now let's add set variable activity to this pipeline. And let's call this activity set pipeline return values. I have already used this activity in many previous videos and used this to set pipeline variable values. But in this case, we want to set pipeline return values that can be also set with this activity. This can be done by opening up the settings tab and changing the variable type from pipeline variable to pipeline return value which will then allow us to create return values for this pipeline. We can click new and this will add our first pipeline return value. Then we can open up the type menu and see that we have plenty of different data types to choose from for our pipeline return values. Types here are more or less the same that we have for pipeline parameters. We can try a few of these different types in this demo and let's create three pipeline return values. For our first value we want to have the type as string and for our second value we want to have it as an expression and for our third one we want to have array as our pipeline return value. Next we want to name our pipeline return values. Let's name our first pipeline return value as string underscore PRV and PRV stands for pipeline return value. Then our second one as expression underscore PRV and then our third one as array underscore PRV. For our string type value we want to write some text. In this case I will write here this is string value. For our expression type return value we want to add a dynamic expression. In this case I will add UTC now function that will return a timestamp to this expression. And lastly for our array let's add three strings. Let's write first, second and third so that our array will contain these three strings when it's returned. Now we have successfully configured this lower level pipeline and we can click debug and see that it runs fine. And it already finished and we can see that our set variable returns some values and we can see all of our pipeline return values there. Next let's create another pipeline and this time let's call this PL tutorial 12 demo 1 master. And to this pipeline we want to add execute pipeline activity and let's call this activity as demo one logic and then we can open up the settings tab and find our demo one logic pipeline. So now our setup here in the data factory is that we have nested these two pipelines on top of each other. So we have the master pipeline that is calling our logic pipeline. Then I want to add three set variable activities to this pipeline so I can demonstrate how the return values are returned from the lower level pipeline. And here it is key that these set variable activities are executed in the logic after the pipeline has executed. So that we first execute the logic pipeline and then we have the set variable activities in our pipeline after that. If we would have them before we wouldn't have the return values available in our pipeline when the set variable activities execute. Next we have to create three variables to this pipeline. I will create variable 1, variable 2, variable 3 and variable 1 and 2 can be strings and then the last one have to be array. If you remember we had the last 
return value as an array. Now let's open up the set variable one activity and let's open up the settings tab and let's set the value for variable one. And here we want to use the dynamic content when setting up the variable value. When we open up the dynamic content, Data Factor is already offering us these demo one logic pipeline activity outputs. We have here demo one logic activity output, then we have demo one logic pipeline return value. And the demo one logic pipeline return value is the one that we want to use. So let's click that. And now we want to specify further which return value we want to fetch from the pipeline return values. Because this is the variable one, I would like to fetch the string underscore PRV return value. So we can write it to the expression as the last object here. And now we should be done with the variable one configuration and we can move on to the variable two. And for the variable two, the process is almost the same, except we want to select a different return value this time. For this one, we want to select the expression underscore PRV value, which will be our timestamp. And for our third variable, the process is more or less the same, but now we want to select the array underscore PRV value for this. And now we should be done with the configuration. So now we can debug our run and see what happens. So let's click the debug button. Our pipeline already finished. It ran the logic pipeline and then it executed the set variable activities. We can check what are the values for our variables after the execution. Our variable one value is this is string and this is correct. Then our variable three value is the array that we specified. And lastly, our variable two is the timestamp that is coming from the UTC now function. So everything worked fine. And this is the way how you can use the pipeline return values in data factory and return some values from the lower level pipeline to the top level pipeline. This is actually a pretty new functionality and I'm very happy that Data Factory team has added this because previously when this was not available and there was a need to send information from a lower level pipeline to the upper level pipeline, you basically had to write it to some file and use lookup to retrieve those and things got really messy really fast. So this is really cool functionality and I'm really happy to have this in the Data Factory. Now you should be familiar with pipeline return values and you should be able to utilize them in your own pipelines. And that is all for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Azure and Data Factory content. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.